So to explain the Laplace transform, let's first consider the Fourier transform and remind ourselves that the Fourier transform involves representing waveforms in terms of the basis functions, which are complex exponentials. Let's just remind ourselves what this is. So e to the minus j omega t equals cos of omega t minus j of sine omega t. And I always encourage people to look at the mathematics, but think about waveforms. So I'll just plot this waveform. I'll just plot the real part, the cos waveform. So it's a time waveform, time domain waveform at a particular frequency, omega, and it's a cos waveform. And if you, for various different omegas, different values of omega, you'll have different frequencies. So there'll be higher frequency or lower frequency. And you multiply your signal by these basis functions. You do a different one for each different value of omega. And you integrate over time uh, to find out the projection of your signal onto that basis function. And then you do it for all different basis functions. That's the Fourier transform. And all of those basis functions look like this. They are all complex exponentials uh, where the amplitude uh, is the change, doesn't change with time. So what about the Laplace? Well, Laplace is where it, we simply have a generalization. And we're now able to look at waveforms which are from a bigger class. So this is from the class of waveforms that are all like this, summing up causes and signs. Um, and the energy here is finite. But Laplace allows us to do more. And what is that generalization? You can see the equation is almost exactly the same, but in here, for our basis function, we now have an S where there is a J omega, and S is a complex number which involves J omega. So it's a generalization. So if you have this here, sigma equals zero, then the Laplace transform is the Fourier transform. And this allows us to have a bigger class of functions. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's look at this e to the minus st equals e to the minus sigma t times e to the minus j omega t. And e to the j minus j omega t, that's the one we had over here with the Fourier transform. And so if we think again in function space, this is now allowing us to have functions which are that basis function here, but multiplied by this term here, this exponential term. So what are those different functions? Let's draw some of them. As I say, it's always good to, to look and think and draw what the functions might be. So if sigma is positive, then this is a negative exponential. A negative exponential looks like this. And it's a negative exponential multiplied by this waveform over here. So that is this function here. And this is the basis function. And for different values of omega, this varies more quickly or more slowly, just as we had over here. And if sigma was negative, then the negatives would cancel. You'd have a positive. And so then you would have a waveform which is going to allow for a growth. And so this is a basis, these will be basis functions that look like this, where the basis are getting, where the function is getting bigger with time. And so now we can have our Laplace transform is going to be made up of signals, all of the signals you can generate by adding these kinds of basis functions. And this is a more general class than this. And this allows for signals which are unstable. And so with Laplace, which grow with time. Uh, so with Laplace, we're able to explore stable, unstable signals and look at when we might design a system so that it's stable in certain circumstances with certain parameters. So it's a more general function, more general transform.